What's going on guys, Super Insane 18 here, and on the first Sunday of every month, my locals does what they call the People's Championship, where the winner of the tournament gets free entry for the entire month, and yesterday I took first place going undefeated 6-0 with, technically speaking, Fire King Snake Eye. Now the reason I say technically speaking is the Fire King engine is at a bare minimum because I actually wanted to play pure Snake Eye but unfortunately was missing some of the cards so in order to fill the space I just had to throw in some Fire King cards and moving forward I will not be playing the Fire Kings but I want to show you guys the deck profile that I went undefeated with yesterday so let's go ahead and jump on in. To kick off the profile we are starting with three copies of Snake Eye Ash. This is by far the best normal summon in the game right now. This card just does so much for you, not only adding you additional resources, but being able to summon resources from your deck as well. This card is just absolutely crazy, and anytime I saw this card in my opening hand, I just won the game pretty much for free. We have two of the brand new Snake Eye Poplar. This is the card that kind of brings the strategy all together because you can add it off of the Ash. And when it's added to your hand, you are able to just special summon it. And of course, when it is summoned, you are able to add any of your Snake Eye spell and traps from your deck to your hand. But not just that, when it goes to Grave, it also lets you put one of your Snake Eye cards from your graveyard face up in your spell and trap zone as a continuous spell. And that just lets you get a ton of resources, especially for free, considering that the other Snake Eye monsters, such as Ash, have the effect to send cards to the graveyard from your field in order to summon from deck. So by being able to put itself or another Snake Eye back, you're essentially getting free resources. Uh, we are only on one copy of Oak. This is a card that I wanted to play two of, but unfortunately I did not have a second and nobody that I knew or my shop did not have one as well. Uh, so we did have to play just the one, but this is one of the cards that I mentioned at the intro that I would have played more of if I had. Unfortunately, just didn't really have it. And then we have our one copy of Snake Eye Birch. This card is really crucial as just an extender. Um, a lot of times you can side it out. I sided it out a lot actually myself, uh, but having it as an additional way to just special summon for free is definitely really strong. And of course, it's also able to do the generic Snake Eye thing of sending itself with another card to summon one from deck. We are on two copies of Snake Eye the Flamberge Dragon. Uh, Flamberge Dragon is a card that you would see a lot of people only playing one of, but since I wanted to do a more pure Snake Eye strategy, having two of these were absolutely crucial, and honestly, there were times during my play where I even missed a third. Now, I don't think I would play a third just because it feels a little bricky, um, but it can definitely come up. I think that if you are going to be playing a pure Snake Eye strategy, that two is the optimal number. Um, I never felt like I needed less than two two. Every single game two felt absolutely mandatory, so I would never imagine cutting this. Uh, then we have our three copies of Dia Bellstar, the Black Witch. Um, this is just another starter for the deck, and it really fits in with the Snake Eye theme. Really, really strong, and it's even a really good extender if you already have Ash. There are combos you can do where you open like Ash and Black Witch and just fully make a board that your opponent's not going to be able to handle. Uh, but that's it for the Snake Eye cards. Now on to the part that I didn't want to play, the Fire Kings. Uh, we are only playing two copies of Kieran. Now, Kieran is probably the better of the Fire Kings, in my opinion, because it allows you to dodge things like Imperm and Valor on something like your Ash by being able to summon itself by destroying a fire. Um, but like I said, I really wasn't looking to play Fire Kings, which is why the amount of cards that I'm playing is so small. Uh, moving on, we have our one copy of Garunix. Again, we're just playing a really minimal Fire King package. Um, even the Fire King deck, though, is only playing one Grunix now because the Snake Eyes are just the better cards, if you ask me. Uh, and then we, of course, have our one Arvada and our one Ponix, um, and that's going to be it for the Snake Eye Monsters. Moving forward, once I get everything that I need, I am cutting these cards out of the deck entirely, uh, just because I feel like they actually hold Snake Eyes back from what they're able to fully accomplish. Um, there were very few games yesterday where I actually needed these. In fact, in one of my matches, I believe it was the final match before Top Cut, uh, my opponent didn't even see a single Fire King card in Game 1 when I won that game, so he didn't even know that I was Fire King going into Game 2. Uh, and then when I started playing Fire Kings, he just didn't know what to do because he never saw them Game 1, so that just really shows that you can play this deck fully without these cards. We have our three copies of Ash Blossom. Not only is it just the most generic, but because we are playing a card like Sunlight Wolf, we are able to recycle this from our graveyard, and doing that can just flat out win you a game. We were at a point in my finals where it was essentially a top deck war, but I was able to add the Ash Blossom back to my hand off of a Sunlight Wolf, and because of that, whatever he top decked was going to get negated, and it just kind of won me the game. We have three copies of Effect Veiler. 
I feel like Effect Veiler is actually way better than Droll right now. A lot of people are moving towards Droll, but being able to Effect Veiler any of the Snake Eye cards, honestly, is just absolutely insane because you're getting essentially multiple negates off of one card. Uh, if you Effect Veiler, let's say, the Ash on Normal Summon, then they can't add, and then they won't be able to use the Effect to summon a Snake Eye from deck. Same thing with Birch, if you... Uh, or not Birch, with uh, Oak. If you Veiler the Oak, they can't summon from Grave, and then they won't be able to summon from deck as well. And it just feels like it's really, really strong. That's going to be it for the monsters, though. On to the spells. Of course, we have our three copies of Wanted, obviously, to search for our Dia Bellstar, with our one copy of the original uh, Sinful Spoils. Now, this is really good in this deck because not only are you able to shuffle back a Dia Bellstar, but you can shuffle back a Snake Eye monster as well, meaning that your Snake Eye effects to summon from deck should never be dead. Uh, because you're always going to be able to do that and then add something. So there were games where I had like a birch in the graveyard uh, and I wanted to be able to get the birch back easily. So I would put the birch, or not the birch, I keep saying birch, I mean oak. I would put the oak back for the sinful, add an ash, normal the ash, and like go through the lines and the ash would summon oak from uh, deck and then oak would summon from grave and just keep going and it was really, really insane. Um... We are on one copy of the Divine Temple of the Snake Eyes. Let me tell you, this card is <laughs> the best card in the deck, hands down. Like, the amount of utility that this card can give you is just crazy. Not only is it an insane combo piece, but it's also interruptions on your opponent's turn by being able to summon back monsters that you have in your back row. And it also allows you to play through something like Nibiru. Uh, there's an anti-nib combo where you'll activate the Divine Temple and you'll put Oak in your back row. And then if your opponent Nibiru's you, because they special summoned a monster, you can use the effect of Divine Temple, summon out the Oak. The Oak is then going to summon one from Grave. You can summon whatever you want. Then you can go ahead and use the Oak effect to send itself in something else to summon something like Flamberge. Then Flamberge can link away with one of your other monsters and the token or whatever. You'll probably have like three monsters on field at this point. And then the Flamberge is going to summon two more from Grave. And you're just able to fully establish a board through Nibiru. And it's insane. Um, this card hands down won me so many of my games yesterday, and I'm probably going to bump it to two. Unfortunately, it's just one of those cards that I also didn't have. I'm actually borrowing this from a friend just to play the one, uh, so I need to pick up some of these, but I absolutely think that I would bump this up to two. Uh, then we are only on one Sanctuary and one Island. Again, I didn't want to play the Fire King, so we have a very minimal package. Um, no really need to go in depth on them, we all know what these do. Uh, going into just generics, we have three Triple Tactics Talons. I think that we are in a very heavy hand trap format, um, and also just a format where your opponent's going to activate monster effects on your turn anyway. We've got stuff like Princess, Ambla Whale, IP, SP, uh, Flamberge. So there's just so many different things that make Talons live that I think you're crazy if you're not playing three. Um... <laughs> We only have two Bonfire, unfortunately. I have not yet been able to pick up my third copy. I'm actually picking one up from somebody at my locals tomorrow. Uh, but because of that, we were only playing two. This is obviously a card that you play three of. Uh, so if you're wondering what I'm taking the Fire King stuff out for, uh, it's everything that I've mentioned I'm going to be playing more copies of, and Bonfire is definitely one of those. Uh, we are on one copy of Monster Reborn. This card is insane, this format, because if everybody's on this deck, you can just win a game by going Monster Reborn, target the opponent's Ash, their Ash adds your Poplar, Poplar summons, and you just fully pop off, and it's crazy. Um, not just that, I won a game yesterday by Reborning my opponent's Princess, and then because I had their Princess and they didn't, not only was I able to summon my own stuff back from my graveyard, uh, but I was also able to prevent them from using Princess to interrupt me, which was really cool. Um, then we have our one copy of One for One. This is just an extender, honestly. You can summon your level ones. And finishing off the main deck, we have three copies of Infinite Impermanence, making the main deck 40 cards. Let's show you guys the extra. And before we get into the extra, just remember that I will be making some dedicated combo tutorials for both Fire King Snake Eye and Pure Snake Eye as well on the channel this upcoming week. So make sure that you guys stay tuned for that if you want to know why this deck is so good. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a ton of combos, so make sure you're ready for those. Now, onto the extra deck, we have the weakest link, and that is going to be the Garunix Eternity. Honestly, cut this card. This card, even if you're playing fire king just it's never going to come up this card is awful i don't think i would ever play this card there's never a moment where you're actually able to make this card because a lot of times you're never going to keep your sanctuary you're going to send it off of something like your snake eyes to summon more monsters and you're, you're just never going to make it honestly there's much better ways to clear a board than this so i i would rather have like a second princess which i know is probably out of the budget for some people um but this card honestly just it was garbage all day long uh, then we have our Link Rebo. Link Rebo is an incredible card. 
not only does it let you just get free resources because of the way that poplar works you can link the poplar into the karibo and then poplar puts itself back uh, and then because of the way that the snake eyes function you can send like ash and poplar and just get resources for free um, and then not just that later game if you're like in a grind game it helps you dodge interruptions as well with its quick effect to tribute a level one so later on when it's in your graveyard if you normal ash and they try to veil or imperm it you can go okay cool link karibo tribute the veil or tribute the ash it dodges the veil or imperm and then you're just fully free to pop off uh, we have our one copy of Dark and our one copy of Hita. These cards are incredible. Um, there are moments in yesterday's tournament where I actually wish I had a second Hita, and I considered maybe dropping the Dark for it. But I think the Dark has its uses because you can always summon out your opponent's Dia Bell Star as well, which gets you going into your combo. So I think that this is a fine ratio. Uh, of course, we have our IP and our SPs. Uh, we are playing two SPs. Uh, maybe cut one. Uh, Two came up quite a bit yesterday, so I don't think you really can cut one comfortably. Um, and then the last Link 2s, we have a Nightmare Phoenix and a Sunlight Wolf. Uh, Phoenix is actually really cool because if you're up against a Fire King deck, it's a pseudo Raigeki by being able to pop the island. Um, and yes, while they do get destruction effects, uh, they're probably not going to be able to recover all that hard. Also depends on like at what point in the turn you do it, if they've already used Garunix or whatever it might be. This card can just flat out win you a game, and Sunlight Wolf is Sunlight Wolf. We're going to be able to recycle our cards. On to our Link 3s, we have the Heat Soul and the Promethean Princess. Uh, Promethean Princess is definitely a card that I wish I had two of going into the tournament, but unfortunately I only pulled one out of my sneak. Um, so yeah, really good card. The reason I want two is because there were a lot of times where my opponent disrupted it, uh, like Called by the Grave or Bell or uh, DD Crow and just like got it out of my graveyard so I couldn't use it anymore and that was really problematic. Uh, On to some Link 4s, we obviously have our Ambler Whale. Uh, Ambler Whale pairs with the Promethean Princess just to kind of get maximum interruptions. Uh, we have an I or an Appaloosa, a Raging Phoenix, and a Zelantis. Appaloosa is just really good. Uh, Raging Phoenix and Zelantis are for the OTK line, which I will show you guys in the combo tutorial, but that's going to be the extra deck. And there you guys have it, a little bit of a longer deck profile, but I wanted to go a little more in-depth than normal just because of how well this deck performed and making sure that you guys understand all of the uh, decisions that I made and why I made those. So if you liked it, you know the deal. Make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, like, comment, share with your friends. As always, always don't forget to check out the channel sponsor dueling guard using code insane 18 you can get five percent off your entire order thank you guys so much for watching i will see you in the next one